Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Advantage One RV today. Whoa. Oh. Do you uh you feel that? The ground's trembling. That must mean there's a little seismic activity about to go on. And uh if that's any indication as to how the rest of this is gonna go, you might want to buckle up. It might be a bumpy ride. <laughs> 16,903 pounds empty before you add stuff to it as we see it here. Welcome to dually country minimum. You're gonna wanna be in a 350 dually and up on one of these, taking very good care to make sure that you have proper payload ratings and whatnot. This is not made to be ultra light. This is just made to be ultra. So to kick things off, if we're talking toy hauling, I always feel it's the most appropriate to check out the rear garage space or you know, outdoor patio, three seasons living room, as I think you very legitimately could consider this one right here. But the main question is what can I load into it? Along the left-hand wall over here, from the absolute back to the absolute front, we have 11 foot eight of loading length. So roughly close to a 12 foot garage. But you have a half bath. Well, actually that's a full bath. This is actually a two full bath, not even a half bath. You have from back here to up to that door, nine foot two inches of loading length. So depending on what you're loading, how big, how wide, and we can always come out here with a tape measure to check things out for you. We are happy to do that. Uh, obviously you might notice that we have the uh, like screen wall, well not even screen, but like three seasons kind of French door swinging style telescoping wall jobber thing, technical term, by the way. <clears throat> Holy cow. So these are 5,000 pound rated D-rings. How many of these do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's like 10. There's like 10 of these 5K D-rings in here. And dovetailed into here is actually a handy little tool chest where you can keep some extra widgets and whiz bangs or wheel chocks or something like that. It's, you know, it's out of the way, but it's wasted space otherwise. Now, naturally we have the Happy Jack power bed and sofa lift and something Jayco did briefly that I wish they would bring back. I just don't know that enough dealerships displayed it to make it worth the value. But what do you think about this? They actually have LED rope lighting on the bottom of those sofas. So just like right now, because the problem is those sofas block a lot of ceiling light. Well, you want to be able to see down here, especially if it's dark and you're loading, you don't want to run stuff into stuff. So that extra lighting I think is awesome. Now, uh, the top big table we're looking at is a portable uh, free floating folding leg table. Uh, no, 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 I'm so sorry. I said that incorrectly. That's what I often see. That is a tri-post pedestal table. Personally, the very first thing I would do is I would get a couple folding legs and turn that into a free floating folding leg table. The other two tables can go inside in front of the big super sofa that we're going to see. Now, an interesting point on all Jayco toy haulers actually is they have a laminated garage floor. It's a super thick, heavy duty laminated garage floor. The idea behind it, because almost nobody else does that, is you cannot exactly enclose and insulate the garage floor of a toy hauler in the same way that you might uh, uh, a North Point or a Pinnacle because of the fuel stations. You cannot potentially trap fumes in there. So they do that a little bit differently. Now what's also neat here, you have a totally separate garage entertainment. This thing has, I, I think four zone entertainment. You've got, so that's not just a TV. What I mean is you have your own separate stereo, Bluetooth, and DVD unit in there, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I mentioned how this is a true to bathroom. It's not a bath and a half. It's an actual toilet and a shower. So if you come in and you're a sweaty Betty and you got to get that beast cleaned off that you're looking at in the mirror, you have the opportunity to do that. Now, of course, you can also just quickly uh, wash your hands out over here and that big smoky glass door right there doesn't have a shade so eh, the folks added their own but man a seismic more than almost anything else i see out there today and i mean it's it's subjective it's arguable this is i think one of the highest luxury level luxury fifth wheel toy haulers out there there's a lot of brands that will give you a solid surface countertop and six point leveling and say, we're a luxury fifth wheel toy hauler. And I suppose it, there really is no definition of it, but just all of the touches, the, the triple air, the whisper ducting, keeping the noise down, just the big open feels, the appointments, everything on this, everything has been touched. Nothing is ignored. Nothing is underdone. Everything is in excess. Like 
all the touches at the top of that slide out. It's it just it's beautiful. It just exudes high class. Um, this sofa right here is actually pretty awesome. All four sections recline. All uh, the uh, you see how they can actually recline and lie back. The middle two sections have a, uh, a fold down armrest. Not just the one, but both of those middle sections. I just want to show you a little bit of every function. And remember those two tabletops and, and that we saw, we'll see the pedestal legs later. They can come in here and you can create a mega Dynofa. The, there's only like two areas on this RV. When I first saw it, I was like, these people didn't use it very much. And I spotted a couple things that made me realize, oh, they actually used it a lot. They just really didn't beat it up. Um, that little spot right there where maybe someone's head or hair kind of rubbed on the, uh, the leatherette a little bit. And then the outside mini fridge, I'll get you out there in a minute. It definitely looks like they, they sat out there and they enjoyed that side patio and they spent some time out there. That is a 21 cubic foot, I believe, residential refrigerator, which means that this seismic also includes an inverter so that obviously you can run that going down the road. The generator can run it if you're in the Bob Evans parking lot, if you are so inclined. Uh, up top here, you'll see, I don't want to miss this because uh, I think I forgot about it earlier, but a Max Air vent fan uh, that also, of course, has the rain sensor, but a loft up top, as many toy haulers uh, tend to have. And whether you're going to use it for sleeping or as attic space, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's awesome, all the different kind of stuff it can do. But notice, right down below it, the ladder actually kind of tucks away to get out of the way. We will come back to that door in just a moment. First, I just want to give you kind of finish up the 360 of the living area, and then I'm going to open all the stuff up. That's not wallpaper, by the way. That is an actual, like, crazy tile backsplash. Now you do have a privacy curtain for that big patio door right there if the sun is just killing you or if you, you know you just don't want people staring in at you or something like that you can you can block that off right there we got our electric tootsie toaster down below and i think we'll actually start our storage tour right down here notice too how the tv can pivot around to get out of the way if need be and then as we work our way around the entertainment center you don't realize the uh all of the hardware for that ramp patio door off the side creating the side patio it actually creates a chunk of storage inside of the RV. Now, where that ladder was on uh, for for the uh, the loft, you see is actually a pantry. But one thing I do want to mention to you is that pantry door, uh, or the, the ladder actually, it does pop out. It, that's not, like you're not supposed to have to climb up it when it's in the straight vertical positioning right there. <laughs> Uh, you don't you don't have to be like a, a baboon finger strength type American Ninja Warrior climber to do that. It, it opens up. Solid counters here. Ooh, do 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 do. Pop a power tower. And I love an elevated serving station like that. Game day or something. I don't know. I don't know. There's just something classy about that. Just something super classy about. And again, back to this super slide, man. Like there's there's lighting in the fascia of that just the the whole treatment of the windows and there's one other thing i want to show you here it was i was told accidental but let me let me kill all the lights in this thing so watch these ceiling lights you turn them on and they swell and then you turn them off and they swell down i was told that was completely unintentional and that once they made the correction, it was going away. It was. It didn't hurt anything. It wasn't a safety concern. And I still, to this day, don't understand why they didn't keep that. I thought that was the coolest thing. Is that just me? I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, by the way, central vacuum system with a little electric dustpan tow kick down there. Oh, nope. I almost went upstairs. I want to get you out here in the patio. But I noticed something. <laughs> it's purple. <laughs> why is it purple? I don't know. I think it's soap. I think that maybe somebody was washing this thing down like crazy and maybe forgot to rinse this off. Maybe they had purple bubble soap or something. That's the that's the only guess that I have because there's no water intrusion into the RV, so everything is sealed properly. And it's just I can only guess that they, that they just forgot to rinse that off. But it's purple, purple patio. And like I said, that's the only other space that made me think, oh, they must have actually used it, and they had some cans sliding in and out of there. And I like how that telescope's in and out, too. Moving back inside, moving upstairs. Our controls for that big ceiling fan, fantastic fan above the kitchen space, thermostat, inverter controls, all right here. Now, notice, too, this is a, a split entry bed and bath 
We'll come back to the bedroom in just a minute. I want to get you here in the bathroom first. You see some good dedicated linen space right there. I forgot to turn on one of the lights, which aggravates only me. You probably never would have noticed had I not said anything. Man, lots of leg room around that toilet. This is a very, I think, fluffy, friendly bathroom. Uh, like, the shower's nice and big and wide open. The uh, kitchen, or, well, the kitchen's solid surface. The bathroom is also solid surface. Um, the double skylight above that, though, once again, everything on a seismic is just, what can we do that is totally unnecessary, but so, so cool and over the top? That's what you're going to get here. Now, one of the things I want to show you in this is... This was built with a king bed from the factory. And I know that because somebody swapped it out and put a queen bed in, and then they just shaved down the decking. I talk about that in our Eagle HTs where I put king beds in small bedrooms all the time. That's all you really have to do is just shave it down. Now, they left that wide open. I'm wondering if they weren't CPAP users, and that was effectively their CPAP shelf. Now, what I wondered, too, is that ain't the factory back, uh, back breaker wafer bed. No, sir. That is a big, thick residential pillow top, memory foam, severe job, and it's heavy. And I said, can the gas struts hold it? Lo and behold, yeah, yeah, they can. Credit to Jayco on that one. I really expected, when I see people upgrade to heavy beds, usually factory gas struts won't hold them up. They did here. But I mentioned whisper air. I don't mean in just the living room. Notice how you don't see the square, so you won't hear the air, which is nerdism number 37, by the way. Now, up front here, big closet space, and uh, I'll just kind of give you, well, you know what? I should have opened that other door. Um, you know what we'll do? Let me back up just a little bit. And we're going to look over here in this closet to give you an idea of the depth at the stackable, capable washer-dryer prep that you're looking at right there. And then straight across from the bed. This is kind of cool. So you've got dresser drawers down to the floor and all kinds of little pockets for storage, but you've also got a big window and a televator. Like I said, this thing has living room, bedroom, garage, and outdoor. I, I It's three or four zone. I, I think they all operate independently, but one or two of them might mirror one another. But holy cow, man, you've got all sorts of separate entertainment going on in here. And it was bugging me that I forgot to show you this side. We've looked at so much. I've opened every single thing up. It seems stupid not to give you a look at the dresser space here. And before we hop outside, a quick look at road mode which is what I've renamed travel mode today. I like things that rhyme. The sofa comes right up to the kitchen. And here, let me show you something I'm doing, just so you know I'm not stepping all over someone's couch. If you are willing to knee crawl uh, across the couch, you can get around that and you can get to, oops, I locked it instead of unlocked it. You can get to the refrigerator side of things. The freezer, we're not gonna get to. If that's a problem for you, at least you know now. And I hope you appreciate the fact that we took the time to crawl around and show you all this stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. It just looks bad. Looks bad. Like the way the 1989 Detroit Pistons were the bad boys. Holy cow. That is... I tell you, the only hiccup with something like this is just you're going to have to plan a site accordingly because she definitely stretches right out there long and wide. This is ideal. Like if you're like, nah, I'm just going to park in the middle of a desert. I don't want anyone around me, but I want to live there for a while. Okay, I could I could see that for sure. Um, it's kind of like the Grinch. You know, the Grinch, everyone said like the Grinch hated Christmas. The Grinch didn't hate Christmas. The Grinch didn't like all the people that were jerks to him. So he went out and lived in the mountains, but you don't have to do that. You could live in a seismic. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin on this. That's kind of why I'm sort of stalling here. So I think I'm going to start back here at the, uh, the ramp patio space and just start climbing my way around and weaving my way up to the roof. You see, obviously, we've got that three seasons kind of door screen wall. And there are panels on that. If you want to leave that shut in screen door mode and still get just airflow, you can do that, too. Uh, rear power awning, dual side power awnings, including a dedicated power awning over the side patio. Uh, notice too that we've got the um, optional use. You don't have to have them back here, steps on the back. Now the RV is not exactly level currently. So let me give you a little pro tip from your Uncle Josh. Be very careful with these stable steps back here because if the RV is not level, if it's a little tail down the way it is, if it's a little nose high, 
then that door won't exactly shut. But if you're actually leveled out, then you don't have any issues. The, the door won't interfere with those stable steps. Anti-slam doors, front and rear. And look at the full viewing window on the door, but you still have that privacy shade. And again, notice that you've got a dedicated power awning just for the entry door and the side patio. Your little precipice lookout point for fun and adventure. What a cool spot over here. Um, I mean, even separate outdoor entertainment, you don't even have to get up to get a drink because the drinks literally come to you. How cool is that? By the way, the um, power awnings that we're uh, looking at here, obviously LED lighting below them, but it's it's so, this one's so long, it actually has a center arm support on it. Um, the uh, pass-through storage on this is actually very respectable as compared to what you often find in a toy hauler. Because uh, toy haulers are all about a big, giant garage, and this one's certainly not really a, a terribly different example of that with a big garage back there. But uh, you, you kinda, you know, don't always get a good front passer because everything is shoved forward. Well, you see, you don't really have that hiccup here. Got that Onan 5500 generator. And when I was walking around the outside, and again, we'll get up to the roof, you might have noticed triple air conditioner. Seismic was literally the first towable RV in history to simultaneously run not just three airs and like juggle back and forth with two compressors and three fans, but all three compressors simultaneously. Seismic is actually where that began. So this is a triple simultaneous air system with that generator down below being able to power everything up. Obviously we got the slide awnings, the, the nose paint package on this looking just, oh, this looks so good. And it's not, the whole body's not a paint package, but it reads like that. The way that the swooshes come off the nose, to me, this feels, it reads almost like a paint package. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just being crazy. I don't know. Six point automatic leveling. That is an on demand water heater, by the way. I, I can't, I've talked about so much. I don't know if I mentioned that inside or not. But if you want to take back to back to back to back hot showers or something like that, you can do that in this one right here. Of course, we're all enclosed, privatized. Uh, the docking station is all protected there. And uh, a seismic basically has the exact same, uh, you know, hot, cold, proven, tested, and mega weather package as a pinnacle and a north point because it's built by the people in the factories that build pinnacles and north points. Now, jumping to the back here, there's a couple little details I want to catch. Uh, I just wanted to give you the frame of reference shot there since we're pretty familiar with where the patio is. Behind the residential refrigerator is this panel right here. It's kind of dual purpose. What it was originally designed as, <laughs> grab that, there we go, was an access panel. You see that little panel that's just kind of floating a little bit right here? That's because the refrigerator is winterized currently, the uh, ice maker system on it. This is designed to be an access panel to the back of your fridge, but they said, you know, why waste it? So they turned it into storage. Also, now all those posts that we're seeing, all the removable like dining tables that are included with this RV, that's where those are stored currently. You could store them elsewhere and all six tires have been upgraded and replaced. I believe this is one of a very thin window of years in which Jayco was not using Goodyear tires. So what the folks put on here, it, all the way around are saloons, and I don't know if you're familiar with them. A lot of people are familiar with Goodyear just by name, but do you really know what Goodyear does and why people think so highly of it? Because if you did, and then you compared to saloons, you'd actually see where saloons are superior in some regards. They are 75 mile an hour rated versus Goodyear's that are 80, uh, 87, but 75 is still more than the speed limit. So to me that it washes out. But saloons have uh, a uh, like a longer warranty. They have some qualities that actually surpass Goodyear's. They are the uh, tire that is standard in the entirety of the Montana fifth wheel series, which is the number one fifth wheel series in the history of fifth wheeling, by the way. And if you get on Montana owners groups, I'm a member of a bunch of those. I help out and I answer a bunch of questions when you know people aren't sure about things. The number one answer, and I mean by landslide, when people say, hey, I bought a used Montana. The tires are a little old because Montana's hold up a long time. What kind of tires should I get? Saloons is always the answer with one or two good years sprinkled in there. Big luxury fifth wheel people know and believe in those saloon tires. I didn't realize, I just talked for like two straight minutes on saloon tires, didn't I? Apologize, I wasn't trying to make a soapbox out of it, but regardless. Now you might've noticed this actually, the fuel station back there, but it has dual 30 gallon fuel cells. You have a separate fuel cell, one just for the generator, one for your toys. So if you wanna run gas for the generator, and then you wanna run something high octane for your side-by-side, this'll do that. 
And I kind of thought real quick before we hop upstairs, I go ahead and close both patios and get my cardio for the day, <laughs> which is okay. I'm needing it. I have been, uh, I've been eating like a dumpster and being very sedentary. I wanted you to get to see both undersides of these so that you can see that they're not scarred up. And just, I mean, look at the gloss. Look at the high gloss on that skin. I, that is the definition of a mirror-like reflectivity, I think. And I really have nothing significant to report on the roof, which in itself is a significantly good thing because that means that there's no worrisome points. Like even the roof air units, the shrouds themselves and the, like the darker skylights above the shower, nothing is weather checked and faded. Everything around here, everything looks good. The seals look good. Everything looks really exact the way it's uh, supposed to. At worst, this front termination strip, I think has approached a point. There is one little bubble right there. It needs a couple touch dabs, uh, just spot sealant. That's that's it, There's there is nothing major to report up here. So if you're ready to shake things up, seismic joke, you don't get those every day. Where, what other RV channel do you get geology jokes? N nowhere, nowhere, probably. I don't know, I've never looked, maybe, possibly. Let me know if I'm wrong. Another thing I'd like if you let me know is, you like it? How cool is this thing? This is, I, and what's amazing is, not only everything that's on this, but the advancement Seismic has made since just continue to blow me away. This is just so over the top of where I am in my life. I envy anyone who takes one of these home. This is just, it's as much of a status symbol as it is a lifestyle, I think. It's beautiful. So if you're ready, we're ready. We get you traded out of it. If you just want it delivered somewhere, you don't got the big vehicle to handle it, we'll call people. We'll help make that happen too. Whatever you need, we'll make it happen. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.